everyone. Today is September 28th and it is Monday. So we started with math. So in your chapter two, please get that out. Page 77. So if you want to try some of those before, go ahead and pause. We have worked on in the past, we have done our tally chart. We have done our frequency table. We have done our picture graph. We have learned how to create a picture graph as well as the frequency table and tally chart. Now we're gonna learn how to read a bar graph and answer some questions. So on page 77, use bar graphs, lesson 2.4. A bar graph uses bars to show data. So what I told the students, that data is just numbers. So, a bar graph, just like all the other charts we've learned, has shows data or numbers. And a scale of equally spaced numbers, and I want to stop right there. So a scale is just how you read the um, bar graph as far as numbers. So another word for scale is skip counting. What are they skip counting by? Uh, or you can also say, what is the scale? That's our vocabulary we want to use, is what is the scale of the bar graph? Well, here we start at zero, and we go zero, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16. So the scale is going by two. Now our question, the students in the reading group made a bar graph to record the number of books they read in October. So that's our title, Books Read in October, based on this reading group. How many books did Seth read? So then we just practiced on being able to identify uh, the books that Max, Amy, Seth, and Kate read. So if we go to Seth, you slide on over until you are at the end of that bar graph. You can follow the line to the bottom where we have number of books, and he read eight books. So find the bar for Seth. It ends at eight. So Seth read eight books in October. How many books did Max read? So we go up to Max. We slide on over until that bar graph ends. We follow the line all the way to the bottom, and that's why we circled six. So Max read six books. Now we're getting to a more challenging question. Who read four fewer books than Kate? Well, we have to do our cubes. This is the entire question. We have to, so that was our U for underlying the question. Circle the key numbers. We have four, and then Kate is a number. We just need to read our graph to figure it out. So we go up to Kate, slide all the way over, follow our line down to 12. So that's why we wrote 12 and circled it. So we did underline the key number, circle the, or underline the question, circle the key number, now box the math verbs. We have two, fewer and than. You uh, subtract when you see fewer and than. So now we need to evaluate the E. Evaluate is we need to come up with a math question and think about how to solve it. So we need to subtract 12, sub, 12 subtract four, which we get eight. Well, it is not asking how many books is Kate, or how many books read are four fewer than Kate. Oh, I can't even come up with a question with that because it's so confusing. It's asking for a person's name. So we know four fewer books is eight. So we need to go to our graph and figure out who read eight books. So that's why you go, you start on the bottom, and you try to find eight. Oh, there's eight. I'm just gonna follow the line up until I match with someone. Oh, there I do. I do, I match with Seth. Because if I keep going, Amy read too many, and Max didn't read enough. So that's why we wrote Seth. Next, what if Amy read five more books? How many books did Amy read? Shade the graph to show how many she read. There's multiple questions in this one. So we kind of broke it down. And the first one we um, recognized is Amy. So we're finding out if what number of books Amy read if she read five more. So we have, we circled our key numbers, five, 
And then Amy, again, we need to figure out where she started if we want to add five. So we go to Amy. It's a little tricky. At the end of this line, at the end of her bar graph, or her, I guess you could say, um, I need to figure out what that word is. I'm just say bar. If you create your own line straight down, Amy read between eight and 10 books. So that's why down here I wrote zero through 10. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. She read a number in between eight and 10. Well, what's in between eight and 10? Nine. So Amy read nine books. More is our math verb. So that's why we boxed it. So now we need to add our key numbers. Nine plus five, which is 14. Because part of our question, it says, how many books did Amy read? 14. Next says, shade the graph to show how many she read. So her new number is she read 14 books. So that's why we go up top and I extended it. So what I did is I went to 14 and I just colored on this line. So I knew this was the line that I'm going to draw Amy to. So I extended her bar. I stopped right at 14 and then I shaded it in. If you want to try numbers or page 78, go ahead. Pause. All right. We talked about the two types of bar graphs. We have a horizontal bar graph, which means our bars go from side to side, or a vertical bar graph, which means our bars go up and down. It has the same data. It doesn't mean one, one looks different, but it does not have different information. It's the same type of graph. It's still a bar graph. So they use the same um, title, activities, numbers, everything to prove that to you. So we're looking at a horizontal bar graph and a vertical one. Both have the same titles, favorite winter activity. That is the same. The other, or the one, or one of two differences are the activity on a horizontal bar graph. What you are looking at, whatever you survey, like what's your favorite color? You know, you would have different colors here. What's your favorite pizza? That would be listed here. So I guess you're now your categories on a horizontal bar graph are on the side. Your numbers are on the bottom. For the vertical bar graph, your numbers are on the side. Not on the bottom, they're on the side. And then your category or whatever you ask, um, whatever questions you asked will go on the bottom. So, number four says, what does each space between two numbers represent? That is saying this space right here. How, how many numbers does that represent? What's the scale? Same, it's pretty much asking what is the scale of the two bar graphs? Or it's pretty much saying what do they skip counting by? But scale is the vocabulary we want to use. Well, it's skip counting by fours, right? 0, 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, 24, 28. So uh, the space right here represents four additional students. So there's four students, there's four, there's four, there's four, and so on and so forth. Number five, why do you think the scale on the graph is zero to 28 by fours instead of zero to 28 by ones? What other scale could you use? So our first question is, why did they not do scales by one, which means it would just be zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, all the way to 28, they would write the numbers in instead of skip counting by fours. Well, we discussed it and it's because our graph would be so long. We want it to fit on the page and it would take so long. No one would be doing any bar graphs if it was, um, if we didn't have a scale. That's why we have a scale so we can make a small picture and get straight to the point. What we could, what another scale we could use is by twos because you can skip count by twos and you will hit all these numbers evenly, which means they all, when you skip count, you say all these numbers. Number 78, use the favorite way to exercise bar graph from one, numbers one to three. All right, now that we're getting into actual problems, just like the tally chart, just like the picture graph, I want you to label the answers next to the categories because then the questions will be so much easier. So 
We looked at biking. We went straight down. Oh, biking's in between six and eight. What's in between six and eight? Seven. So biking is seven. Walking. Go to end of walking. Go straight down. We have six. Soccer. Go all the way over. Go straight down. We have 14. And karate. Go all the way over. Go straight down. We have 10. And our scale is going by twos. We are counting by twos. Now we can answer the questions. Which activity did the most students choose? Think, which bar is the longest? Well, we already did that. We already know who, um, what students chose the most, and that was soccer, because that's our greatest number. How many students answered the survey? This is a question that was in all our other homeworks. Even, it's a, even though it's a different chart, we still do the same. We're gonna add up all the numbers that we have in our chart, and that's telling us that, oh, okay, they asked 37 students, what is your favorite way to exercise? The number three, which activity received seven fewer votes than soccer? So this was like the question we just did earlier, uh, earlier today. We circle our key numbers, seven, we know soccer is in this graph, so we find soccer, 14, we circle our key number. We box our math verb, than, we know than means subtract. We evaluate, well, what are we gonna subtract? 14 subtract seven, then we're gonna answer it for solving is seven. But that's not what we write because the question is saying, well, which activity? It wants an activity, it's not asking for a number. So we need to figure out, all right, how, what activity had, did seven students vote for? We already did it, it's up here. Seven for biking, so our answer is biking. Your homework is page 80A, all of it. And the back side, 80B, all of it. Okay. This is a review. We're rounding. And then we're estimating, which is we're rounding, and then we're subtracting. And you choose which um, place value you want to use if it's not specific. Two and three are specific are specific, so make sure you're paying attention. Then we practice a brain check for reading because we have not uh, done one before. So in third grade brain check, week six and seven, get that out. We pop, well first, we labeled our paragraphs, okay? We labeled all our paragraphs. I don't know why our wonders curriculum does this, but it does not indent to show a new paragraph. But, so we have to look at our spaces to know, okay, this is paragraph one, two, three. It's paragraph four, there's a space, so five, there's a space, six, even though it's a one-liner, we're just gonna say six. Space seven, there's a space, and then paragraph eight. Then we, dissected our instructions. Read the passage, a lesson learned. Okay, so we're gonna read. And then we're gonna answer numbers one through five. We read the story, so read the story. You need to pause and read it, go ahead. You need to pause and read, go ahead. I didn't go over anything about the actual story. I didn't talk about it because um, I want to somewhat be like a brain check, but not a total brain check. So I don't want to go over what they read. Can we answer? Oh, if you want to answer one through one and two, A and B, go ahead. Pause. Okay, so now answer numbers one through five. Base your answers on a lesson learned. Question number one, read the sentence from the passage. So we box, the first thing we're gonna do is read the sentence. This sentence was from a lesson learned. They just pulled it straight out and put it here. Cat 2 needed a sturdy elephant to move the heavy logs to build his house. What does sturdy most likely mean in the sentence above? Friendly, smart, strong, or young? The student said strong. Well, what word helped them understand or think that, okay, sturdy meant strong? Well, heavy. You need to think in your mind or talk out loud. Hmm. I know an elephant's really big. I don't know what sturdy means, but he needs to move heavy logs. 
So he doesn't need a friendly elephant to do that. He doesn't need a smart elephant to do that. He doesn't need a young elephant to do that. He needs a strong elephant to move heavy logs. So Cat 2 needed a strong elephant to move the heavy logs to build his house. Number two, this question has two parts. This is so important. So many students forget to do both. First, it tells you what to do first. Answer part A. Then answer part B. Part A, read the sentences from the passage. So again, this is pulled straight from the passage. The two men quickly scrambled out of the way. Cat 2 was too afraid to move. So what does the word scrambled mean? Hurry, search, skip, or walked? Well, students said even hurried, and that, that would make sense. The two men hurried, oh, I'm sorry, the two men quickly hurried out of the way. Well, part B is saying, well, how do you know that? Which word helps you understand what scrambled means? Too quickly afraid or move. So when you're using your context clues, quickly is the one that helps you know, okay, he quickly hurried out of the way. So... Three and four are homework, and I'll explain. I want you to try number three. Number four, put the events of the passage in the correct order by numbering them from one to five. Write the correct number in front of each event. What that means is, you know, we're practicing sequence. So you need to figure out out of these events, what happened first? I'm not sure, I'm not reading, not paying attention, but let's say Lago does not like hearing Cat 2's bragging. Let's say that happened first, I'd write a one. Okay, well, what happened after this in the story? Okay, it's right here, right number two. All right, then what happened after Katu wants to build the biggest house? And so you just keep numbering them so they're in order from what happened in the story. So that's your homework. We had a lot to learn. Then we pulled out our Wonders Your Turn practice book. So if you want to turn to page 13. So we first labeled the paragraphs. And I'm gonna tell you one thing that I sometimes do, and maybe I shouldn't, but when I label the paragraphs, when there's conversations, I'll group them all together. But the book technically wants it to be, okay, this is paragraph one, there's the indent. Since these are all separate indents, it should be paragraph three, four, five, or one, two, three, four, five, and then that should be paragraph six, and so on. But you can do how I did it right now. So I have paragraph one, I just put all these for paragraph two. There's an indent, which means you see on that first line, there's kind of a space. Well, that's telling you a new paragraph starting. So paragraph three, paragraph four, again, I grouped those two together. I really shouldn't have, but paragraph four, Paragraph five and paragraph six, I grouped together and so on. If you want to pause, fill in your paragraphs. We read it, but we stopped right here. We didn't have enough time. So the rest, the homework is finish reading page 14. So if you weren't here, you need to read both. Now I want to explain why we number our paragraphs. One reason is when eventually you are going to be writing a few paragraphs and you need to to write in paragraph three. It says that I know Tom had enjoys Thanksgiving because it says Thanksgiving is so much fun, right? You need to say what specific paragraph. Also, there might be a, a question where it says in paragraph blank and then ask you a question. It's telling you where to go. So it's nice to already label them because you know exactly where to go. All right. Then our direction. So I always want to just label our paragraphs first, get it out of the way, and then go on to directions. Read the passage, okay? Number one, we're going to read, giving thanks. Use the visualized strategy to help you understand what the characters are describing. A visualized strategy is what we practice where, you, where when you read, you're picturing exactly what's going on, exactly what they say. All right, then we started question to restate. So page 15 is homework as well. Questions one, two, three. And we need to reread the passage. You don't need to because you're 
reading it right now, but you do need to answer the questions. You need to restate. I want you to write restate. So question one in paragraph six, but again, remember when I made a beautiful oops and I grouped some paragraphs because they were just one liners. Well, it is not our paragraph six. The answer is in our paragraph three. So that's why I cross that off and put three. So in paragraph three, what is the first thing that Tom does on Thanksgiving? We restate the first thing Tom does on Thanksgiving is, and then you need to answer it. Don't just restate it. You have to restate and answer. Number two, what is the next thing that Tom does on Thanksgiving? You can restate it by saying, the next thing that Tom does on Thanksgiving is, and then answer it. Number three, in the passage, find another example of sequence under the heading, should be heading, Thanksgiving in India. What is the first thing that happens in this example? So our headings are the bold that are not the title. They're usually smaller. So everything on this page is everything after this heading is going to talk about how India celebrates their Thanksgiving. The heading, so everything on this page up until the next heading is going to talk about Thanksgiving in America and how we celebrate. So the question is asking, when you read, where's the next sequence? Remember we talked about sequences first, next, then second, finally. So where does it talk about the first thing that they do to celebrate um, Thanksgiving in India? So that's what it wants you to do. So you could say the first thing that happens in this example is, and then go ahead and give it. And then you need to read for 30 minutes. You need to start your science. It is up and uploaded. And that is it. And also pee at one o'clock. All righty, bye-bye.